Remember, while you're listening, write your answers on the question. Hello and welcome, my dear students, to a new episode of our English program. Today, we are going to study together something different. We are going to study about experiment and doing experiments. Are you ready? Before we start talking about experiments, we will go on a short break and we will be back soon. Stay with us. Remember, while you're listening, write your answers on the question. And welcome back, my dear students. As I have mentioned before the break, today we are going to talk about doing experiments. Well done. So, by the end of today's episode, you will be able to, first of all, use the new vocabulary items in meaningful sentences. Then, use the present simple passive correctly so we are going to study grammar okay then change present simple sentences from active into passive it sounds confusing but we will study these things together today okay are you ready so let's move on to the first exercise before we start today's lesson, we have an easy exercise that we're going to do with each other. Let's read it. Write what you would say in the following situations, language functions. Again, write what you would say in the following situations. So we have different situations. Let's take the first one. Your sister likes the color of the butterfly fish. What might you tell her? She likes the butterfly fish. She likes the colors of the butterfly fish. You can respond with, I agree with you. It has lots of nice colors. As you know, butterfly fish has lots of beautiful colors. Or you can respond with, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Let's move on to the next situation. You saw a girl drinking dirty water. What happens if you drink dirty water? Is it healthy? I'm sure no. So what will happen? Good, so you should tell her, don't drink dirty water. Stop her from drinking dirty water. Don't drink dirty water, my dear students. Also, it's dangerous. Why is it dangerous? Because you might die. So you can respond with, it's dangerous. You might die. So you shouldn't drink dirty water. Excellent. Your sister leaves the tap on while brushing her teeth. While brushing her teeth. What you should tell her? She should always turn the tap off. Why? Why she should turn the tap off? Excellent to save water. Well done. So she must always first of all turn the tap off. Why? To save water. Also there is another response to this situation. You can say you must save water. We should all save water. Excellent. Okay, my dear students, as I have mentioned before the break, today we are going to talk about doing experiments. In the past, there were lots of scientists who did lots of different experiments and they discovered lots of important inventions. How about watching this video together to meet these 10 famous scientists? Are you ready? Okay, look here. The top list of famous scientists of all time. We will start with, of course, Albert Einstein. 
Albert Einstein. Then Isaac Newton who discovered the gravity. Well done. Then we have James Clerk Maxwell. Look here. We have Mr. Kepler. Then Galileo, Darwin, of course you have met Darwin. Then we have Louis Pasteur who invented the vaccine, Edwin Hubble. We have Stephen Hawking, the handicapped inventor. Thomas Edison, who invented the, the light bulb, the light bulb. Well done. Now, my dear students, we will move on to something else. We will talk with each other about your and my favorite scientist. I'm sure that you have more than one favorite scientist. Let's start talking about them. Look here. Who is your favorite scientist? I'm going to talk about my favorite scientists. First of all, I have a Graham Bell. Well done, Graham Bell. What did he invent? Think. What did he invent? Something we use every day to talk with each other. Something we use it every day for talking. Well done. He invented the telephone. He invented the telephone. Excellent. Then we have, look here. We have just met this man in the video. Can you remember him? Thomas Edison, well done. And I have told you that he invented the light bulb. Excellent. He invented the light bulb to save energy. And finally, you have, you have Al Khwarizmi. Do you remember Al Khwarizmi? I'm sure you remember him. We have studied a lot about Al Khwarizmi. And one of his most important invention is the map of the world. So he made the map of the world. Excellent. Now, my dear students, let's start talking about doing experiment. But first of all, we have some new vocabulary that might help you in talking about experiments. Well done. Now let's start with the video. How about watching this video together? Be careful and let's start watching this video together. Hi kids, today we're going to do an experiment called glowing water. Remember, always have your parents with you while doing an experiment. Here's what you'll need. Some water, a pair of pliers, a funnel, some clear bottles, a measuring cup, a UV light or black light, and some highlighters. First, fill each bottle with 60 milliliters of water. pliers and take your highlighter and take the bottom out of the highlighter then take the inside and put it in your bottle. Now let this sit for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes take some tweezers and take your highlighters out of your bottle and put them in the garbage. Now take your UV light and shine it on your solution to watch the water glow. After watching this video, my dear students, we have met a new word, a new word, excellent, which is what? The boy was doing what? He was doing an experiment. Well done. He was doing an experiment. Experiment is a noun. It's a noun. So let's start reading the definition of the word experiment together. A scientific study to see what happens 
to a thing when something is done to it. As you have watched from the previous video, that the boy was what? He was trying to make glowing light. So he was trying to make what? Glowing water. Excellent. Okay, and now my dear students, let's read the example together. We always do experiments in the science lab. We always do experiments in the science lab. Do you like doing experiments? Yes, but you should be careful when you do your experiments. You should be careful. Excellent. Now, are you ready to move to the next word? Okay, let's see what do we have. Ah, oh, we have the word temperature. We have the word temperature. Temperature. The temperature in the summer is very hot. It's 40 degrees. So in the summer, the temperature is high. It's 40 degrees. And in winter, the temperature is low. It's low. It's very cold. It's my treat. Excellent, 17 degrees, 17 degrees. Now here, the word temperature, my dear students, it's a noun. It's a noun. It's how hot or cold something is. How hot or cold something is. We have here an example. The temperature outside is very high the temperature outside is very high as i have mentioned before during summer the temperature excellent reach 40 degrees sometimes and sometimes 50 so it's very hot and in winter it goes down it goes down excellent well done now look here what do you think the boy is doing what do you think he is using? We have stormy, rain, change, fair, very dry, and we have a thermometer. We have a thermometer. What do we use the thermometer for? What do we use the thermometer for? It's a measuring equipment. So we have here measure. We have the verb measure. Excellent. It's a Verb, what do I mean by measure? When I use my ruler to measure the line, to measure what the line? When I use the thermometer to measure the temperature. So what do I mean by measure? As I have told you, my dear student, it's a verb. So we can change this verb from the present to the past tense. Excellent. When we want to change the verb measure from the present to the past tense, we should add an ed and after adding an ed we should take off an e and leave only one e so it will be measured excellent it will be measured well done measure my dear student is to know how much there is of something using different measuring objects using different measuring objects like for example the ruler the ruler is a measuring object. Excellent. We have here an example. Doctors measure the temperature of sick people. So doctors measure the temperature of sick people. When your excellent temperature goes up, you're sick. But when your temperature is average, you're fine. So be careful. When your temperature goes up, you should go to the Doctor, to what? To measure your temperature. To measure your temperature. Excellent. Now, my dear students, we will... Oh, what's this? When you finish your exams, when you finish your exams, after that, you feel worried. Why do you feel worried? Excellent. You feel worried because you're waiting for your results, for your results excellent i wish that you've got high results in your exams all your exams excellent so the next word is result good result it's a noun it's a noun 
The thing that happens when something is done. The thing that happens when something is done. So when you finish answering your exam, your teacher will correct it, right? Excellent. And then she will give you the result of your exam, whether it's 10 out of 10 or 9 out of 10. Excellent. Good. Example, I always get a good result in my English exam. Not only in my English exam, but only in my, also in my science exam. Also in my science exam. So, result. Excellent. Result. I hope that you've got good results in your last exams. Well done. Now, boys and girls, we are going to move to some exercises. I want to check your understanding, whether you have understood the new words or no. Are you ready? Good. Let's go. Here we have Fill in the spaces with a suitable word from the list. We have four different words. We have measure, temperature, results, experiments. Again, we have measure, temperature, result, experiments. Number one, I like doing what? Doing results? No, I like doing experiments. Well done. I like doing experiments with my friends in the classroom. No, in the science lab. In the science lab. So let's read the sentence again. I like doing experiments with my friends in the science lab. Number two, we water by liter. We what? We what? We temperature? No, we measure, excellent, we measure water by liter, we measure water by liter. Are you ready to answer number three? Are you ready? Okay, let's move to number three. The today is about 25 degrees centigrade. Okay, the what? The what? The Temperature today is about 25 degrees centigrade. Excellent. The temperature today is about 25 degrees centigrade, so the weather is cold. Now, my dear students, we are going to move to something new. We're going to talk about the passive voice. The passive voice. Have you heard of the passive voice before? No. Okay. We are going today to study the passive voice. Let's watch this video very carefully and try, try to understand the passive voice. Are you ready? Let's start. Teacher, what is the passive voice? A passive voice is a type of sentence. A passive voice sentence puts the object or receiver of the action to the subject position. But you say, teacher, what does that mean? Well, let me give you an example. Here is a boy. Here is a ball. What do boys do with balls? The boy throws the ball. In this sentence we see the boy is the subject, throws is the verb, and the ball is our direct object. But what if I didn't want to focus my sentence on the boy and wanted to focus on what was happening to the ball? Could I reverse it? Well, if I just did it this way, it makes no sense at all. The ball throws the boy. We all know that balls do not throw boys. But with passive voice, I can completely change the sentence around. Now we see that the ball is thrown by the boy. This sentence makes complete sense and it is passive. We are now focusing the action on the ball and not so much the boy. But you may say to yourself, teacher, how do I form such a sentence? 
And now, my dear students, after watching this video, did you understand the passive voice? Is it clear? Okay, we'll go over it again very quickly. Here we have some examples. Excellent, let's go. For the first example, the boy throws the ball. The boy throws the ball. We have here the boy, which is the subject, throws the verb, and the ball is the object. In the passive sentence, you should start with the object. Start with the object. Excellent. So, the ball is thrown by the boy. The ball is thrown by the boy. Let's move to the next example. My mother bakes cakes. My mother bakes cakes. My mother is the subject. Bakes is the verb. And cakes is the object. Well done. Here we have the sentence in the passive. Cakes are baked by my mother. Excellent. Next we have scientists do experiments. Scientists do experiments. So scientist is the subject. Do is the verb. And experiments is the object. Well done. Experiments are done by scientists. So you should always start your passive sentence with the object. Now, my dear students, we will go over the rule of the passive verbs. First of all, you should start the sentence with the object. Excellent, the object. Then, which is usually not always the third part of the sentence. Excellent. Then we have verb to be is or are is if the object is singular well done are if the object is plural more than one thing then we have the past participle which is the third form of the verb excellent not the second one the third one here we have an example my sister writes stories this is the object we should start with the object excellent stories which is plural so we should use are stories are written excellent not wrote written because written is the past participle of the verb right it's written by whom by my sister excellent so stories are written by my sister you should start with the stories which is the object then are which is verb to be so stories are number three written excellent by my sister now here i brought for you my dear students some example of the past participle or the third form of the verb we have here the verb give gave given excellent so the third form is given then we have look we have right excellent wrote and and what written good then he is what excellent play so we have a play played and played well done here we have do you remember the verb throw good throw through and thrown and then we have what make good make made and made well done now my dear students are you ready to answer some exercises okay let's go change the following sentences into passive so we have sentences we should change them into passive good the first one is my brother buys a new car my brother buys a new car my brother is the subject buys is the verb a new car is the object so what's the answer excellent a new car is bought by my brother a new car which is the object is because a new car is singular and bought is the third form of the verb buys good next my neighbor picks up flowers my neighbor picks up flowers good flowers flowers it's plural are picked up by my neighbor well done let's move on to number three my friend reads the lesson loudly my friend reads what the lesson loudly so the lesson is the object well done 
The lesson is read loudly by my friend. Is read. Read is the past participle of the verb read. Now, my cousin drinks five bottles of water a day. Five bottles of water are drunk a day by my cousin. By my cousin. Excellent. Today, my students, we have studied together what? Excellent. We have studied some new vocabulary about doing experiments. We have studied the passive voice and we have answered some questions that are related to the passive voice. I hope that you have enjoyed today's lesson. See you soon with more interesting things to learn. Bye-bye. Remember, while you're listening, write your answers on the questions.